guys, today I'm heading out to an American Standard, I think it's American Standard package unit that I installed several years ago, just to kind of check it out a little bit. It's a little cooler than I'd like today. Just walking outside, I feel like it's still in like the upper 60s. So hopefully it warms up just a little bit. It's 1230, so we'll see. Check out the capacitor, see how everything looks, if you need to clean it up, all that kind of stuff. So bring you guys along for the ride. This is our American Standard. We're gonna open up and take a look at it. Our defrost controller, transformer, contactor, a little bit of dirt to clean up, <laughs> heat strips. See which breaker is which so we can label them. Uh, 249 volts. Let's shut off a breaker, see if we can kill this thing and I can label it. We're going to try the 60s because that should be 10 kW heat strip. Eleven point nine. Interesting. That is the right breaker. To ground from this yellow leg here. Eleven point two five volts. Let me check it back at the breaker. Breaker might be bad. So I took the breaker off and I measured from the terminals of the breaker, which was removed to ground. There's eleven volts. So it's an issue coming back to the circuit, not the breaker. Now we're looking at the contactor over here. Let's see if I can do this properly. Two hundred forty-nine volts. So let's turn this thing off and make sure the other breaker, we can label it compressor. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and label that one too. Looks like we got an X13 motor. Looks like it's in pretty good shape still. A little bit of junk outside. Maybe we can get something to wipe that off with. There's our capacitor for the compressor. We can check that. Of course, the uh, blower won't have a capacitor because it's ECM X13 type. To clean this stuff up too okay we're checking the fan side you can't really see it down there but it's 45.5 4.51 so it's a little bit low so we'll see how the compressor comes out compressor side 44.94 so that's good so that's pretty daggone close the fan side's a little bit low. this is our compressor compartment we have our suction tap and suction pressure switch there low pressure switch there's our head pressure tap, it's on the hot gas line. And there's a pressure switch for the head coming off the compressor. There's another tab for liquid right there, passing between the condenser and the evaporator. And let's get over there. I can see that Alliance compressors. Yeah, it's a 2016 model looks like. All right, just needs to be cleaned up too a little bit. And I'll take this last panel out, we'll take a look at the evaporator because we're sitting cockeyed, so we'll see how it's gonna drain, or it looks like it does, because there's no water here. There's no water in the cabinet right there. So it looks like it's still draining. There's our evaporator, TXV. A little bit of dirt on it. Not too bad, we'll hit it with the aerosol coil cleaner before we start it back up. Let's see what we have down here. Flex connector looks pretty good. So yeah, okay, that's a good sign. I saw some insulation there, I was kind of wondering, but I think it's probably been in here the whole time. Wipe off that blower housing a little bit, looks a little bit better. I didn't get the back side because I gotta take the whole thing out. Pull all the wires off. So I wanted to kinda, I don't know, maybe I'm anal. That's why I want to see it nice and shiny even though the back side's not. But it would be nice to take this thing apart and clean the blower wheel and everything because it is a little bit dirty. I went ahead and wiped off the unit a little bit. Wiped off the top. I'm trying to make it a little bit cleaner. Clean is good. Got most of the junk from inside of the unit. Go to hook up the P51s and the Y Jack probes and start this thing up, see how it looks in cooling. Right, I'm gonna take my return and supply probes and put them inside and the closest outlets. P51 is on. And we have it hooked up to the liquid line and the suction line right here. You can't hardly see it. 
the liquid line right there because you want to get pressure from the liquid line too so you have the correct pressure to calculate subcooling with so you can kind of see that out there hey man i got another helper look at that look at a good puppy good puppy he's a good puppy another great helper better than some human ones as you can see from the screenshot we have just a little bit of subcooling and some super heat so we're going to wait and see how the system runs out because our subcooling probably come up um, uh, to see if there's a target subcooling. I don't know if there's one written on there or not, but we should expect at least several degrees of subcooling. So we'll let it run for a few minutes. It says 11 minutes the gauges have been on, so it's probably been about five minutes of runtime. It's not probably not even that much. So let's give it about 15 minutes to see if it doesn't satisfy. Compare what we have. We have a compressor here running at eight amps, so that's right about right for a three ton unit, which I'm pretty sure this is. I'll double check that, but I'm almost positive. So that looks pretty good. We have a fan motor, which we're getting a leg of off of the defrost relay, which shuts it off when it's defrosting at 0.39 or 0.93 amps, which should be good. We'll double check that with the nameplate. Now looking at the nameplate, we see it's 4CC 4036, 14 sear, 36,000 BTUs at three tons, 15 on the compressor, so we're good. Indoor fan motor, we'll check. Outdoor fan motor is 1.1, so we're good there too. Let's see if I can trace down the indoor fan motor wire. But uh, we're looking good so far. I do need to tape up this wire here. Wire's looking a little bit bad right there. Let's try to get that too. Well, I didn't get a whole lot of filming done out here at the end of the call. I'm sorry about that, guys. I had, uh, the, the call was actually for a buddy of mine that I grew up with. We actually played ball together and everything. So we were over there talking. And the whole idea of filming the rest of the call just totally left my brain. There wasn't a whole lot left. I mean, the superheat was around 20-ish, maybe a little bit more. So pushing the upper limit of superheat, but we're gonna follow that throughout the season and keep checking on it. It's at probably about as high as I would tolerate before I would think something was issued with the TXV. But the subcooling was okay. So subcooling was right there around eight or nine. So it ended up pretty good. Airflow was good. We had a perfect temperature split. We had about a 50 to 55% indoor relative humidity. We were right at 19 degrees, so we were pretty close to right on the money with that. The biggest issue with the unit is the fact that uh, it just needs a little bit of cleaning and it's sitting not very level. It's not affecting the draining because there was no evidence of overflow of the drain and that drain pan in there is uh, pretty high on the side, so it's not flowing over the side of it. So we're going to, the, where the plan is that whenever it cools off in the fall, we'll take the unit off Pour a concrete pad there, something a little bit more stable that won't, hopefully won't sink, something more substantial. Those pads that I have down there are the ones that, they're not totally filled with styrofoam or solid material or anything. They have the little brace design that are just basically little firms running like this underneath it. And they tend to sink a little bit more easier because there's less surface area meeting the ground than there is on a pad that's filled completely. So maybe that'll help a little bit. It was. It was too cockeyed that I couldn't put another rubber pad underneath it to try to level it up because it was higher than that. It was, it was a bigger deficiency than we had uh, the technology for. So overall, the unit was pretty good. It just needs a little bit of aesthetic improvement and a little bit of leveling. So we'll check it again in the fall, guys. I'm off to pick up my kids from school. I may be a couple minutes late because I was sitting there, you know, talking, basically talking and having a good time with them. So we go way back, he's a real good guy. So it's one of the things where the few calls I get to do out there, I'm glad it's for people like that. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you do a little bit more of this, try to put it up in between our live streams, maybe air one during the live stream, I don't know.